right, good morning. Mike, David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Is Detroit is complete of a running team you face with the ability to go inside, outside, and, and are these the best two backs in tandem you've kind of gone against this year? Uh, that, I, I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, very impressed with their, you know, the multiplicity run game, but the, also you got to be real impressed with the run blocking unit and um, you know the ability of both backs to be productive. I mean, they're over two thousand yards. So, but yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. I I'd agree. I agree with that. And, and are they a sort of team? Their style. How do you describe their styles as being different? And, and do they just kind of go with the hot hand or whatever's working against that? Oh, uh, I, I think it's a flow. Um, you know, it, it, that's, I mean, it's not something that definitely I, I didn't study or, you know, but I, I think clearly when you watch them by concept, I mean, you know, and that's what Dan and his staff ha have done. And, and you, you know, those are all things that really are part of your game planning, you know, of how you can try to tie into who's in the game and so forth. But, the, I mean, that, that's something you do weekly. Clarence Hill, Forward Star Telegram. Uh, you've often said defense win championship, the quarterbacks win the Super Bowls. How well is Dak playing right now, and what more do you need from him over the last couple of weeks of the season? Um, I, you know, I, I do you know, respectfully. I, I just think I mean that's a very you know vague question. You know, I mean, I, I think um, he's he's playing really well, um, but yeah, I, I think it's just like any season. I mean, this is you know the regular season is clearly different than the playoffs playoffs, and um, the game's it's still a game of football, but. Um, you know, I, I, I do like the body of work that he's put together. I, I think like any year, you know, it's it's not, you know, are you going to go through adversities and so forth? Yeah, it's just a matter of when and how much and how it comes at you. And I think he's, he's handled that very well. You know, uh, I just go through the first quarter of the season. We, you know, we, we started, um, you know, a little slower. Um, and then, you know, once we got going, I, I think he's done a great job of just really running the system. And, and, and that's, that, that's where the discipline comes at the quarterback uh, position, I think he's exceptional there because, you know, we're about ball distribution. You know, we spend a lot of time as a staff, you know, you know, in the off season putting our schemes together and, you know, because at this point in the year, you know, we don't want to go down there on a Wednesday or Thursday and install. We want to feel like we're reviewing and that plays best to the quarterback. And, uh, but, you know, he, he has to handle the changes. Um, you know, as far as the command, the, the, the huddle, the cadence and all that, that that's a constant uh, that, that, that grows each and every week. So, oh, but I, I do, I, I really like the way he's playing. I think he's definitely playoff ready. Um, Mike Todd Archer with ESPN. Laporta was a guy that you guys like coming into the draft. Mm -hmm. Has he kind of been what you thought he'd be uh, coming out? Oh, yeah, I, I think he's done an excellent job. Um, just, you know, watch him at, at Iowa, you know, I. Personally, I thought he was a, he was a complete tight end. You know, you know, obviously they didn't throw the ball around the yard all day, but you can see the, the opportunities that he did have. You know, uh, his ability to, you know, his yards after the catch. Um, you know, and, and I think he's he's shown the ability in college, and I, you know, he's obviously he's in a high powered offense uh, where his his route running is is definitely stands out. But you know, I, I felt that he was someone you can really you know utilize in the run blocking and. Also, someone that can you know play that, you know, third tight end, moving back forward, even you know from a fullback position, and and I, I think his numbers in a passing game speak for themselves. What went into the decision on uh, bringing Molesko up and then releasing him? Well, I just think as, as as we look at the you know you look at your roster, these are, these are really conversations that have been going on for weeks, and um, you know we just we, you know we feel Wally's ready ready to go. He's um, his time has been you know. Well spent in, in the in the weight room and in training, and you know, and I, I think the depth at, at at the tackle position is important. Mike. Michael Gelkin, Dallas Morning News, along the lines of IR, uh, Rick return. Sean McEwen, where is he, and how soon do you start his clock in order to get him playoff ready? If that's still um, you know, Sean, Sean's doing very well. I mean, he, he's you know, same guy every day. That's you know, I always loved about Sean is his work ethic is. Impeccable, um, but yeah, I, I just I mean I, I have nothing to report on this week, but he's doing well. And Micah, he, when we get into the quarterback, he gets there so fast. Even when they're trying to get rid of the ball quick, mm -hmm. he still finds a way to affect the passer. How how distinct is that about the way that he wins? Oh man, I was mean, I mean it's distinct, unique. Well, I mean, you whip out your vocabulary. I mean he's uh, yeah I, I I don't know if you've ever. I mean the speed and his get off and his ability to split two and I mean his. You know, he's the number one pressure player in the National Football League. And 
Um, and he has a tremendous skill set. But yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely unique. Garrett. Garrett Podell, CBS Sports. Mike, yesterday you said after watching film, the Lions were the best team that you'd be playing this year. What was it after watching film, whether it was specific players or things that you saw that kind of led you to that um, I think my words were more, I think this is going to be the biggest challenge that we've had at home uh, this this year. And in, in the reality of it, cause it's because it's the next one. But no, I, I just, I do respect what I've seen on film. Um, I, I'm impressed um, with what they've, you know, the program that they've built up there. You know, obviously it starts with Dan. Um, you know, being in that, that division a long time, you know, I, I've always, um, you know, it was fondly of that place. I, I thought it was, you know, you know the steel belt, man. You know it's you know I have a little love for the steel belt up here in, in Detroit and just the town and you know it's a great sports town. So you know um, I, I am I am. It's nice to see you know that the family have success and you know I just I just think Dan has done a heck of a job and I think it's going to be a hell of a contest Saturday night. Calvin. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. Uh, Hutchinson, obviously we talk a lot about Micah in this room, but we think of Hutchinson on the other side there. Say it again, Calvin. We talk a lot about Micah. Yes. Uh, what do you think about Hutchison? Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I uh, love his, you know, love his tempo. You know, obviously his length. Um, you know, has, has a great, great motor and finish. You know, has a hell of a spin move. But no, I, I, I think he's, you know, complete command of the defense. You, you can see his comfort, and um, and I think that re really reflects in, in how they move him around. So, you know, you'll see him inside sometimes. He'll play both sides. So, obviously, uh, a very versatile player. Yeah. Nick Harris, tell us Cowboys.com. You know how hard it is for the Lions to win the NFC North. Why do you think Dan Campbell has been able to figure it out this year? Oh, I mean, you know, just watching clearly from the outside, you know, I think, um, you know, when, you know, he went in there with a with a vision, and, and I think the team plays the division, and um, I think there's, they've, they've been very consistent, uh, you know, felt that way. I think we played in, what, mid-October last year. I, I think that, um, you know, going into that game, I, I, I thought that the – that was a very good football team, and I think now a year later, you know, uh, it's it's definitely a team that's grown, and um, you know the offense has been explosive. I think Aaron Glenn does a, an excellent job with the defense. I mean, it's just I, I think like anything when you know you look across the across the field and in the in the coach makes you work during the week, and then and then with that, it's a it's a competitive um, you know game. It'll all, like they all do come down to execution. I mean, I, I just think that those guys have done a have done a good job and just uh, deserve the respect. Mike. Jordan Lewis, his, his physicality, somebody that you can feel uh, this past weekend. Where, where do you see him over the course of this season just continue to grow? Um, I think it's pretty remarkable, you know, just the way he's he's come back from uh, the injury and hasn't missed anything. Um, you know, I think, you know, what him and Terrence Steele have, have done so far has uh, been extremely impressed uh, with those guys. Uh, but that's, that's Jordan. I mean, it's, you know, and that's why, you know, he commands respect. Um, that he has in our locker room, in, in our in our operations, uh, because you know everybody respects the way he prepares, and he's a man's man, and, and he definitely plays that way. Todd, Mike, when, when you lay out goals at the beginning of the season, you know it's always win the division and those sort of things. Is mm -hmm. where's going eight and zero at home rank? Is that something you guys put out the, at the board in the start of the year? Or is that something um, that grows during the course of the year? I think, to be honest, with you, I think it's uh, frankly, in my experience in the league, it's something that's. You know, generally understood. Um, you know, I, I learned it in Kansas City. Um, you know, back in those years, just an incredible home team. And, and the old adage is, if you know, if you win all, win all your home games and split on the road, you'll you know you'll have a healthy seed in the playoffs. And you know, I, I think that's a pretty realistic you know goal to to have because you know when you when you have a great home field advantage, and you know, I think home field advantage is a little different than it was 30 years ago. Um, I, I think the the ability of no huddle and the communication and the silent count and all those things have improved much. That uh, you know, home field advantage isn't quite what it used to be, um, but it, 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 there's definitely benefits of it. So, uh, yeah, we, we would, you know, we'd be thrilled to keep winning at home. Clarence, can you talk about uh, why did it work with Evans, and can you talk about the linebacker depth behind uh, the starter now with Evans gone? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll answer that, you know, at the end of the week. I, th I think it's important for, for that to be answered then. Um, but, yes, I, I think this is, you know, these, these are roster moves, and, and they're tough moves. And, you know, it's a it's a bit of a catch-22. You know, we're, we're a healthy football team, and, and, and we hope it stays that way. Um, so, 
And, but then when you get you get down to the this time of year, and you know you you start to project, uh, particularly with young players, um, it's it, this is why you have to make you know tough decisions like this. So um, it's you know it, this is really stems from being healthy, but you know also you know the tackle position, and and, and, and we just you know felt the depth with with Wally would be beneficial. All right, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you.